Computers have fundamentally changed the trajectory of humanity. The development of this technology has allowed us to exponentially develop iterations and improvements over the last generations of tech. This is the factor in which Moore's law was based on where it states that the number of transistors in an integrated circuit doubles every two years. This increases efficiency in machines and in turn creates a more powerful processor over time. And generally, this has been accurate, which goes to show how much computers allows us to develop new technologies. It allows us to calculate and design products that one single person could not in a hundred or even ten years ago. Technologies such as CAD or computer Computer-assisted design is an example of a computer program that has tremendously helped our progress in many factors of engineering. So today, we embark on a journey through the history of computers and what has gotten us to this point, starting with… Modern computers are defined as electronic devices used for a variety of purposes. They are designed to execute applications and provide a variety of solutions by combining integrated hardware and software components. By this definition, we're gonna start by the end of World War II. Two months after the war, the first programmable electronic general-purpose device computers was put into general use. It was named Tainiac. They were big, 30-ton computers that takes up a large room to house. This is where the design concept of John von Neumann was developed called the von Neumann's architecture that has been basically in use as the foundation of modern computer architecture. In the 1950s, we saw the rise of mainframes, and the next computer in line called the Univac 1 was no different. Designed for business applications, this was designed by the same people who invented the ENIAC, J. Prosper Ecret, and John Mockley. IBM also entered the conversation with their development of the IBM 700 series that was a significant step towards the development of mainframe technology. The 1960s was regarded as a tumultuous time, with the era being regarded as the civil rights movement era. I still have a dream. But the development of computers haven't stopped. In fact, they worked diligently to shrink the room-sized computer into a still big but smaller cabinet-sized computer. With a PDP series of computers leading the way, time-sharing systems were also developed where multiple users can use one single computer. This was an eventful era for computing, especially by the end where computers has helped humanity take the first steps to the moon. Intel has been the leading head of microprocessors to this day, and it started in the 1970s when they developed the first microprocessor, the Intel 4004. This logic gate looking chip was cutting edge silicon gate technology at the time, where a complete general purpose central processing unit was fit in a single microchip with a whopping 740 to 750 kilohertz clock speed, which is snail space right now but at the time was blank. Speed. The next development came with the Altair 8800 which actually isn't far off with the size of modern towers right now. This was the first commercially successful line of microcomputer kits which gave way to the ideas of personal computers. With Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak not long after developing Apple II in 1977 which popularized personal computers. In 1974, two computer scientists, Vinton Cerf and Robert Kahn, published the details of TCP which is Transmission Control Protocol which enables the exchange of data between two systems. They also go on to develop the Internet Protocol. This is the start of the developing internet which will not be public until the 1990s.
By this time, many companies are trying their stab at the advent of personal computer technologies, which spawned many form factors specific to their respective companies, which is when IBM, the mainframe company I mentioned earlier, set the standards which computers still follow to this day. Development of the modern operating system like the Windows by Microsoft and Macintosh by Apple was also in the horizon, utilizing user-friendly graphic interfaces to more easily utilize the capabilities of the computer systems they have. This is also the rise of the modern peripherals we now see ourselves using to interact with our computers, with Windows offering my support. Fun fact, the mouse was actually first utilized by Xerox Alto in 1973, but was not popularized until the release of Apple's Macintosh 128K in 1987, and the Atari ST computer system in 1985. The first laptops were also being developed by IBM offering a portable computer experience for people who use computers on the go. It was the 1990s, a guy named Tim wakes up one morning and decides he wants to change humanity forever. He goes on to develop the World Wide Web. He also thought of Hypertext Transfer Protocol or the HTTP which all websites to this day follow. This was also the rise of desktop computers and the advent of personal digital assistants or the PDAs. The 2000s brought the proliferations of laptops, tablets, and smartphones, and the release of iPhones in 2007 revolutionized the way we access the internet. Suddenly, all information of the world fit in the palm of your hands. It also skyrocketed the smartphone industry with its touch interface utilizing capacitive touch as the main way of navigating through the device. By this time, the internet speeds and bandwidth has significantly increased where we are able to store huge chunks of data through the internet using the cloud. This is also the start of the impending march of artificial intelligence and machine learning. We are about to reach the physical limits of silicon, having reached 2 nanometer processes which is about 5 atoms apart. This means in order to further develop a more efficient computers, we must use a better material than silicon or develop better architecture for the material, which is the reason why quantum computers are starting to be researched and developed. Artificial intelligence is also at its peak, being able to create arguably realistic recreations of human speech art, music, and many others which is threatening to take many people in the creative industry's jobs. The computer has allowed us to achieve so much in a relatively short amount of time. This industry is important to keep developing in order to push the boundaries of humanity. 